Hello viewers, welcome to Ultimate Gaming Guide. Welcome to another computer upgrade tutorial. This time it's going to be Dell XPS 8300. So before proceeding, uh, let's just uh, check the pros, why this is a good candidate for an upgrade. Uh, so if you look at the pros, uh, this computer was based on Sandy Breeze chip. So it can be, now you can find a Core i7 Sandy Bridge, like Core i7 2600, those chips for really good price for, for around like 15 to $20. So, and these this, uh, Core i7 chips are still very good by today's standard. And uh, everything in this computer is standard. Like it has a 24 pin ATX power supply. So no special adapter is required. And also the front pin panel connectors are also easy to get into um, and it has four RAM slots so you can just get those uh, DDR3 RAMs, 4 gigabyte RAM, those are really uh, affordable on eBay, uh, something around like 4 to 5 dollars and uh, you, you can have like four of these uh, and fill all the four RAM slots and you'll get uh, like a 16 GB RAM uh, so that way 16 GB RAM, I know still still pretty good for gaming or any kind of like video editing work. And another thing, it supports NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, I had trouble using uh, Radeon GPUs because the back in that time, the most of the Radeon GPUs was like PCI Express 3 compatible. Back in the day, those NVIDIA GPUs like NVIDIA 9 series and NVIDIA 10 series GPUs, those are PCI Express 3 too compatible and this computer Dell 8300 has PCI Express 2 compatible slot so only the Nvidia GPUs will work I, I mentioned that again only the Nvidia GPUs PCI Express 2 compatible GPUs like 9 series and 10 series will work on this computer uh, so first first things first so this computer originally came with Windows 7 which is no good anymore uh, so first thing, what do you have to do? You need to put a, like a SATA SSD in there. So all you gotta do, just get a, like a 2.5 inch SATA SSD and a plug into one of the SATA port there. Uh, just get accord, something according to your need, like 500 gig or one, t one terabyte, whatever you can afford. And uh, what do you have to do? You can uh, get like a Windows 10 ISO from Microsoft web website and just install it over there. Uh, but there are lots of videos on YouTube how to install Windows 10. Uh, all you have to do, just uh, create a Windows 10 installation media using the USB driver or Rufus software. Um, you must disable the secure boot or CSM. Uh, or if you want, uh, you can also run Windows 11 in there, but uh, make sure you just like uh, buy a key from a, like a third-party website um, uh, and they work really good uh, you can buy from G2A uh, a Windows 10 or Windows 11 key uh, and they work really good um, just uh, change the boot order like when you're gonna create a Windows 10 installation media on your USB drive make sure uh, to get to BIOS using the F uh, pressing the F2 button and uh, when you get to the BIOS change your boot order and put that USB installation media on the top of the priority list. So it will boot from your USB. And when you are installing the, uh, the your Windows 10 or Windows 11, uh, select that SSD drive that you just installed. Uh, and once the SSD is up and running, it will be a night and day type of difference. Uh, and the next uh, order of business uh, is the RAM upgrade. Uh, install four. I had lots of trouble installing, uh, finding a good RAM for this uh, Dell XPS 8300. Uh, I had a whole bunch of DDR3 RAMs, but uh, most of them would not work. But this is the RAM that worked for me. This is a Samsung RAM, PC3 uh, 10600U, 10, or like the, or you can say this is third. Um, 1333 megahertz and the timing is if you can't find this exact RAM just look for this timing uh, 9 11 B1 this one worked for me so I had like four of this uh, RAM sticks on the four on four RAM slots 
and it was a total of 16 GB that worked perfectly for me. I tried some of the 8 GB sticks on this computer. For some reason, they would not work. So I would suggest uh, fill up all, all four slots using the 4 GB RAMs each and get this 911 B1 timing. Okay, so next order of business is power supply upgrade because if you want to uh, uh, upgrade this computer, you must upgrade its graphics card. And with the with the power supply, this computer come in. It's uh, you're, it's not gonna be enough to power up a graphics card. So you need to get at least a 400 watt power supply, or uh, a 450 watt or 500 watt, whatever you can find at a good affordable price. Uh, but whatever you're getting, make sure you get a power supply that has like a bottom, uh, bottom um, opening, uh, bottom fan. So that way, what will happen? It will uh, suck all the heat from this computer and uh, blow it out the back. Because if you if you look at this computer case, it has like a very enclosed case. Uh, if you look at the case right here, see there is no opening on the side. So if you get a like and the, and then and the power supply is on the top. So if you get a, like a bottom opening power supply, it will suck all the air, all the hot air that CPU is producing and blow it out of the back. So so it will be a very good idea to get a like a power supply that is uh with the bottom opening. Okay, and uh, whatever power supply you get, make sure it's an 80 plus certified. And make sure it has a like a six pin or eight pin um, PCIe or power connector. So you need that for your GPU. Uh, and make sure it has four pin CPU connector because this motherboard has a like a four pin CPU connector. For the in in this build, I use a 970 GTX 970, and it needed like a one eight pin PCIe connector. Uh, so that would be enough, but some of the 970 variants have like instead of eight one eight pin has like two six pins. So just so just get one according to your need, according to your uh, uh, graphics card. And uh, for older power supply, you can use adapter cables. Uh, this is the adapter cable looks like. So for instance. Uh, the graphics card that I'm using for this computer has like two six pin. So, and the, and the uh, power supply that I'm using only has one six pin. So what I did was, uh, I used one, um, one of the SATA power supply, one of the SATA connector with a six pin, six pin GPU cable. And I was able to, uh, power up my graphics card. And uh, if you need an 8-pin power supply, you can also get that. Just look at the picture on the bottom. So instead of so instead of one SATA power connector, it has two SATA power connector. So you need to plug those in your available SATA ports, and then you can power up a 8-pin power supply. But you don't need this if you if you can get a, like a good power supply. It should already come with an 8-pin GPU cable or uh, eight pin uh, or six pin PCIe cable, uh, so you would not need all these adapters. But if you if you uh, if you if you happen to get a power supply that is older model, uh, then you have to use these cables. And for the graphics card, uh, like I said, most Nvidia GPUs will work. But I would suggest to just to stick with the uh, ten series or nine series. Don't go beyond that. Uh, 16, uh, 16 series might work, like 1660 Ti or 1650 might work, but I'm not 100% sure because I only tested uh, the GTX 9 series and 10 series. So because uh, back in the day, uh, these computer only have the PCI Express 2 slots. So only the PCI Express 2 compatible GPUs will work. The 9 series and the 10 series NVIDIA GPUs those are PCI Express 2 compatible. So that's for the GPU upgrade and for the CPU upgrade. This computer originally came with uh, Core i5 2400, uh, which is okay, but not that not that great. You can upgrade to Core i5 2500K, but uh, if you can, you should you should upgrade to a Core i7. Uh, these Core i7, these early Core i7, Sandy Bridge, 
when these Sandy Bridge chips were made, Intel was like top of their game. And uh, these chips are really good, even, even to these days. Um, I personally used the Core i7 2600 and I've also found an alternative. For some reason, if you see the Core i7 2600 chips are a little bit expensive, uh, maybe around like $25, but you can find this chip, this Zion E3-1270 uh, V1, or like it, it would not mention, this is the version number one, the very first Xeon E3-1270. This is basically a Core i7-2600, but it's just missing the iGPU, which should not be a problem because you are putting a dedicated graphics card in your computer. So you would not need an iGPU capable CPU. So if, you, uh, if you're trying to get a Core i7 and uh, if you find that Core i7 chip is a little expensive for you, you can go for this one. Uh, I personally got a uh, Xeon E3 1270 chip from eBay for $15. So that was a great deal. And as for the internal, as you can see, uh, I uh, put like uh, four RAM slots in there and that's my uh, 400 watt power supply, 80 plus certified power supply. And as for the performance, the um, as you can see, uh, this is a popular benchmarking software from Steam. It's called 3D Mark. After running a benchmark test on this thing, uh, I was able to get like a CPU score of 2451 which is what with Core i5-2400. Uh, but if you have a, like a Core i7 chip, you can get a score of 3000 or like around 3100. So that would be a very good if you could manage a Core i7 chip, Core i7-2600. And the graphics score is very good, 3500. With this score, you could be, you would be able to play your popular titles like Fortnite, uh, CSGO, Minecraft and uh, all those other, uh, you know, popular games that people play these days. And uh, another benchmarking software that I used, this is the uh, Nova Bench, uh, where you can get a, like an overview of all the components. For instance, for the CPU score with the Core i5-2500, I got a, like a 387. Uh, again, if you had a Core i7 or the Xeon E3-1270, you would have got a, like a 587 score. So you, you could uh, in, increase your CPU score by 200 if you just had a, like a Core i7 chip. And, you know, those, those Core i7 chip, you could get it for $15 to $20. So very, very good deal. And uh, with the GPU score is 200. That's very respectable. So when whenever these uh, benchmark software runs they they compute these gpus for 1440p because that's the standard these days but if you are willing to turn down your resolution to 1080p you would have a more like a pleasant experience and this is uh the storage core i'm using a micron uh sata ssd uh 2.5 inch 256 gb and I got a storage or score of 86, which is very, very good. And with the 400 watt power supply, you can see my CPU efficiency is 90% and GPU efficiency is 85%. So they're both doing pretty good job. And as for the gaming performance, I actually did not test it myself because I build, I'm building this computer to resell. So... This is the performance you can expect from a GTX 970. And this is the graphics card I would recommend if you were to upgrade a Dell XPS 8300. And you can expect a gaming performance uh, for CSGO 156 FPS for uh, 1080p, Fortnite 94 FPS, uh, PUBG uh, 63 FPS, GTA 5 um, 53 FPS, League of Legends, 156 FPS, Overwatch, 97 FPS, Minecraft, 189 FPS, uh, Battlefield 1, 62 FPS. So all, all doing pretty good performance. So this is good for someone who's just starting out or you are in school, you know, you, know, you are 
or just a teenager, don't have enough money. So with spending just around $150, uh, you could get a gaming computer uh, because it's not always uh, it's not always um, a good idea, or you you can't. It's all, not always affordable to get a, like a two thousand dollar computer, and not everybody can afford that. But with just a hundred fifty dollar computer, you can just get started and play popular games. And this is my expense summary. Uh, I got this. Uh, I actually did not have this computer. I had the motherboard. Uh, and I got this motherboard motherboard for only twenty seven dollar. The CPU, the uh, Xeon E three that I'm using, uh, Xeon E three twelve seventy. I got it for fifteen dollar. And the fourth uh, stick of RAM, I got it for like twenty dollars. Uh, you can get them even cheaper. Just uh, keep an eye on eBay. And the two fifty six SSD was twelve dollar. And the GTX nine seventy was forty dollars. And the power supply was $25. So my total expense coming out to $139. So that's a that's a very good computer for $139. And my final verdict, this is a solid 1080p gaming machine. And it can play AAA titles if you're willing to lower the settings. Uh, this is also a great computer for everyday use, schoolwork, or video editing. Uh, and... Uh, for competitive gaming like CSGO, uh, like Valorant, this is an excellent GPU or excellent computer. There is one thing that I forgot to mention. Uh, in case you are using the OEM ca case, uh, you, the OEM case is not very uh, friendly to airflow. So I would suggest you to drill out some holes at the bottom. As you can see at the pictures right here. Uh, there is usually a, like a sticker here that you can use this as a guide to drill out a bunch of holes and uh, drill out these holes using a brad tip drill. But uh, make sure before you start drilling, um, you make sure you take out everything from the case, your motherboard and all the components because uh, the drill residue, those metal uh, feelings or met metal residue from the drill could get into your motherboard's component and short things out. So make sure if you're using the OEM case, make sure you take out everything. And uh, and you if you drill it out, uh, then the heat from your graphics card would be able to get out. So that's one thing to consider uh, if you're using the OEM case. Uh, so I hope all this information was helpful to you. So if you have any questions, uh, please put a comment uh, in the comment section and I will try my best to answer those questions. And uh, thank you so much for watching. You guys have a good day.